everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Plays Monster Train. Second time around the horn here. I only recently realized, by the way, I was watching Mouth play a little Monster Train. I only recently realized you can actually, if you don't random, or maybe random chooses like a random variant as well. But um, you can actually choose the secondary faction as, you know, the the default or as the friends and foes update, which is kind of interesting. But today, we're going to go back with the Hellhorn, and we're just going gonna to random again. Covenant rank 10 seems to be about right. We, we got extremely lucky that we won our last one. Uh, there's no doubt about that. <laughs> so what, what kind of... Okay, so it's you, it's the Imp Hellhorned, and then it's the alternate Stygian, which allows for discard meta to happen. Which Offering Token actually helps out a lot with, to be honest with you. So let's see, we got, we got an Imp-focused run here. When you draw any non-champion card, its cost is randomized between 1 and 3. I think we can make that work. We have some expensive cards. They they change the way gauge works. And it's kind of bad for us because imps are going to be... They're already cheap. <laughs> um, so they, they will become more expensive. We've played Rally before, so let's do the other one. Let's do the imp-focused build. Even though it seems to... And this is mostly for, you know, academic purposes. Kind of runs counter to our original... Um, game plan where we would want probably less imps because uh the imps are going to cost more than we expect although this does make imps cheaper as well all right so you are here we got nothing for free which actually makes sense because the cost is randomized between one and three however imps are now cheaper so this is good and then you're also going to take a hit for me that's great news i think we might as well give you some rage and then, the the frostbite doesn't seem to do that much, so I would I would either summon a train steward or or give you even more rage, and I'm gonna give you even more rage. I think twenty rage is is pretty spicy. Um, so I would say, being able to summon more of these is is pretty sweet. I don't think we need to summon a, a whole bunch. I actually think... Taking 10 damage is not ideal, don't get me wrong. But I want the gold. Um, so I think we'll do something like that. We don't really have any kind of support on any of the other floors. So you gotta be a little careful, but... Um, 10 damage, hold on. I'm like, let's do this. So you're dead now. You're gonna make it. You don't have... We could wound you a little bit. Yeah, we get one in our hand anyway, so I, th I think we should just make sure that you're hurt a little bit. Maybe we can get you with a spell on the top floor, but we definitely want to summon, like, as many imps as possible here. So you're taking 54 damage, which means you're getting hit one time. Um, let's ascend the backline unit. Now you're taking 107, which is essentially two hits. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I don't think it was super smooth. I, I definitely do not think it was super smooth, but here we are. We would really like uh, expensive cards. These, I, I don't think, are good enough, honestly. We, we want expensive cards that benefit from Volatile Gauge. Titan's Tooth is a huge one. Um, this one's a tough choice. I, I think you have to go Titan Sentry just because it's by far the best unit. Um, I don't know if that's the tank. I don't, I don't know if we want that to tank for our... Champion, though. I don't think we have the capacity yet to make that work. Um, but we definitely want to buff their HP. I mean, you definitely want to go Lodestone Totem. Why? D excuse me. Why is Lodestone Totem uh, not gold? We've won with this. We won with this. Or did we lose on that? We might have lost on the Stygian run now that I think about it. Um, give me a reroll. Because the HP is of the utmost importance. Or is a large stone more important? I think you I think you go for the double HP, honestly. And I would probably go with like a train steward removal. I think we got a good thing going here. The only thing is with Lodestone, um I don't know it, well, it's not really Lodestone's fault. I'm gonna leave this off for now. But I'm I'm trying to think about how I'm going to uh encant a lot when all of our spells are gonna cost more than usual. But we'll, we'll figure it out, I suppose. Um, 
So I would say you have you give spikes. Okay. I would say you definitely summon the Titan sentry down here. And then let's put you here. We could sap you. I think we do want you here. So it's it's a bit of a weird play for sure, but um, I think this is the way we want to set this up. Any unit that's hitting us is going to die uh, to the frostbite. And then up here, we already know what we're getting ourselves into. We do have some random discards, which is kind of tempting too, but, but work with me here. We, we love that. Um, we want you to die as well, though. I don't know how we're going to get there now that I think about it. <laughs> um, something like this. And then hear me out. We really want this to get discarded for free. It didn't. We could play it. I think we'll just play it. I hate to do it because we wasted so, ma so much getting them up there when we could have put the imps on a different floor. But you're already... Okay, you're in a, a tight spot. So we love this. We, we love that you're killing an imp as well, believe it or not. And then down here, we don't care too much. I think we'd rather just... I don't know. It depends if he comes out with spikes. I feel like you might benefit the most from the rage, honestly. And then... I don't know what else we would do here. We don't really want to summon any more imps. No real reason to discard. I mean, I guess you could draw a discard and like just get through your deck a little faster. You're all dead. Okay, so we're not sweating it. All right, it went fine. <laughs> really, mostly because we added HP to our tank, and our tank is also good uh, in their own right, even with base stats. So we'll, we'll, we'll just tackle that as it comes. I think a vent can be okay. And I, I think we definitely like expensive cards. Expensive cards are going to be working in our favor now. But Volatile Gauge is way worse now. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Which is, you know, by design. <laughs> uh, let's let's make the rage double stack. That that could be very very sick, and then lower its cost. I think that does work. By the way, I think we're okay here. So so far, I feel pretty good. One horn's tome is very interesting because um, it will be cheaper. Trample can be good too, but you know, what? if there's ever been a run for one horn's tome, I think this might be it. And I don't know who we're going to put it on. The Lodestone Totem? <laughs> this will put it on our champ and then just try to keep uh, units in front of them? I don't know. We, I mean, it just it being so much cheaper is going to be awesome in and of itself. So again, we like, um, we like this down here. We tend to like Lodestone Totem down here as well. You're taking 40 dang damage, huh? We know we want you here. You're taking 40 damage? That's stupid. I'm, I'm going to let you take it. I know that's going to sound nuts, but we're, we're creating so many uh, imps that I think we can just put human shields in front of this guy. Now, I'm just going to hit you with the obvious one. We don't want to put human shields in front of this guy uh, because we need the frostbite to exist in order to do as much damage as possible. Um... I don't really like any of this, uh, to be honest. I was hoping that wouldn't be what we would draw. <laughs> I'll summon one of these just to weaken you a little bit more. Um, but we, we got to be very careful. Definitely, like, very, very careful. So we, we know we want to do something like this. You're going to explode two times, which is, which is still very scary. A vent is actually great here. We'll play the vent for zero. And then, I'm like, rage. Where does the rage go? I'm going to level with you. It's super weird. But I think putting it on the lodestone is like the way to go. As in, And it truly is insane. But I also think it's the way. Then for one. How much do you have? 40? Hear me out here. I didn't do the math, but I had a feeling we were going to get you there. <laughs> now, why would you put Rage on Lodestone when it has 1 HP? Well, I, you know what? There is a valid question there. It does die to sweep, which is really bad. Um, 
And we can't really afford the ritual here as much as Rage 20 would be would be sick. I think we can't do it. I think we gotta instead just do like, you know, if, if we could cast a spell to sap these guys and... I was gonna say cast another spell to sap these guys, but that, that doesn't appear like that's gonna happen. We can get a Train Steward out of our deck. And you know what? Our Frostbite Lord is not taking any damage, so I'm, I'm very content with this. Oh, you did have haste, though. That's my bad. Um, still an expensive One Horns Totem, unfortunately. So I think rather than use it, you would probably do like this. Which, again, is keeping your, your tank in a good position and applying some Frostbite that we're happy to see. A bit of a, a bit of a wonky play, I'm not gonna deny it, but like... We're kinda, we're hanging tough here, you're taking 100 damage. That's not good enough. Um, imps are cheap on this floor. So we might as well do that. Now I'm just, I'm just thinking, okay? I'm just thinking. You're just studying it, you know how dogs is and all that. Um, I think maybe... 20 rage? <laughs> But I, I'm like, does it work well on you? It does work pretty well on you. And the sap is going to make it a little easier. And the frostbite is going to mean that you die. Um, before you even get to attack, I think, up here. But, like, you know. It's, it's weird. It's a weird one right now. I would 100% say, especially because we have so few units. Um, it is interesting. I, I do like the idea of that in an imp deck. Two of these is a little much, even for me. I think a rail beater could be okay. We definitely want energy, I think. If if it if volatile gauge got zero to three, which I think is what it used to be, um, I, I would be way more interested. But because it's one to three instead, it's actually like a huge nerf. Um, but but our deck is pretty thin. I think we got a lots of we got lots of ideas here. Whenever you would play a spell that would ascend or descend the unit, apply days two. We do have an ascend that we that already adds days, but still. You know, I think we take you, and we we don't build an encant floor because we can't reliably cast spells that much. Yo, what is this? Fledgling imp? So it just gives you a better imp. But do I care? <laughs> I'm like, is that a... I guess, you know what? To get the rage every single turn is probably... That is probably good. Yeah, and it makes the imps cheaper regardless, but... I was hoping it would make imps cost two less, but then when I thought about it, I was like... They would never turn that on, because why would imps need to cost two less? It's only if you have volatile gauge, so that would be a super weird buff for it. But I think we're, we're rolling nicely here. I don't mind stronger enemies. Um, I don't think it's that bad. We, we would like a way to apply armor. That would be a big one for us. So I would also... I mean, you have to go out here. No doubt. I would say that this is a good situation to get a cold Celia. Um, Frostbite 6 for armor 10. We say we probably go no on that. No summon effects. No summon effects, so we won't play it. Alright. You being up there, we know we can get you for 0. Lodestone Totem has to be played. It's uh, very important. So Lodestone Totem, you get out there. You guys don't have encant abilities. Are we still going to cast here? Yeah. But I'm just trying to figure out what we're going to cast on. Because for me, I'm like... You really, you're one away, huh? How does that happen? Oh, because I'm doing one extra damage. All right, so that's good, and I, I like that. I like that. I thought that worked out pretty well. We'd prefer to take as little damage as possible. So I think maybe, like... I think maybe... Oh, but that could discard with something we don't want to discard. Is is a tough one. This is a tough one for me. I'm just going to say it. It's a tough one. I do want you to die. There's multiple different ways we could do it, but they all have kind of discard potential that I do not like. I think for sure we need to keep Vent to kill you. So in that case, I know it's like a heavy overkill, but I'm actually going to Crypt Builder you. That, that can't have been the right play. Like, even in my brain right now, I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> 
but we did it. Okay, so again, we're this time I think actually we're gonna give um, rage to the sweep unit, and it's just gonna freaking cream them, dude. Uh, and one horn is is actually mighty tempting here for sure. It does mean that you're fragile, so if you get hit, you die, which is actually going to be really tough for us to manifest. So I actually think maybe we'd rather have one horn on the shard tail queen, just for like safety's sake. It seems sensible to me. And we'll get you out for like super rage. And then down here, we definitely want to do something like this and sap you guys so you do less damage to our tank. I know that seemed like a weird play, but I just think like without any means to heal our tank, our tank is not long for this world. I would love it if they were, but I don't think they are. Um, in fact, like they're dying this turn unless we do something about it. So they, I, th I think that applying one horns to our sweeper would have been a bad play. But this super rage here is awesome. And we're definitely going to vent down here. So it's just a matter of what else we do. I think the, the zero cost rage imp is always going to be sick to keep that moving up there. And we, I finally feel like in control of like where we're at on this run, to be honest. Um, I would say we like this and then this, really. It did, it, now that I think about it, it, it triggered your encant, which is not great. But you're, you're still toasted regardless. And we know we like that. And what do we do down here? There's many different options, but I would say you just keep Rage going up here for now. Um, we could Crypt build you, but I actually like that Imp dying. Um, I, think it, I think it works well for us. No, no reason to ascend the unit. No real reason to cast anything at all, really. So let's just, uh, let's just move it on. You're taking 59 damage, which is really bad. But a zero cost vent is going to slap. That's going to do some slapping down here. So we know we like something like this. And then what are we going to cast in advance of that? Honestly, I think you apply this rage. How much damage did you do? Seven? Oh my god. I think we apply this rage. We might as well Titan's Tooth you, and then we, you can vent regardless. So now you're taking 300 damage, which is much nicer. <laughs> and you're also going to take 300 on the first turn here. So, yeah, pretty good. All right, we, we got something going here. It's not a guarantee, but it's it's definitely looking pretty good. That was with the trial on. And you got me thinking. My brain's got me thinking now, for sure. I just worry that the imp is not... Or the, the zero cost imp play is not going to work well for us. Because it's not going to cost zero. I actually don't think any of these are relevant either. What I don't want to do is get the imp, uh, whatever it's called, when you sacrifice, you get two energy and then uh, get one draw. But it costs us one or two energy to do it in the first place, and then it's a dead draw, and you draw something that maybe doesn't work. Like I guess you could always draw something that maybe doesn't work, but I think this is a higher risk with Volatile Gauge. I gotta say, I mean, I feel like the new Volatile Gauge... Um, Nerf is actually, like, pretty sensible. Because it means that it's not just a, a, a cheesy stomp anymore. As much as I kind of wish that it were. <laughs> um, so we'd like to make expensive things consistently cheaper. Because it does work this way, I believe. But do we really... There's nothing really we want to cut with this. So I think we'd say no. Permafrost is not that relevant. So we'll, we'll do our reroll. And then, I, I mean, straight up. Oh, do it if we can make that. Oh, we can make that hold over. There is a little something in my head about like a vent every single turn. It's a little weak, but it clears out like the backline enemy so easily. But so does Frostbite. Like Frostbite already clears them out. So let's like quintuple down on our rage strategy instead. And uh, 10 magic power. I mean, dude, yeah, put that on vent. And then, in terms of removal, like, both Forgone Power and Queen's Impling are not that essential. We seem to play Forgone Power less because it, uh, it targets too many of our spells that are actually, like, essential to play. That's my hunch right now, at least. If I'm wrong, uh, so sue me. I, I don't really want to turn on Spell Shield. But I feel like we got a good grasp on this one, at least for now. Sweep units are going to really present the problem. That's that's the biggest issue for us right now is sweep units. Um, so I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, if I play you and Lodestone Totem, will you live? And the answer is yes. 
because what we would do after that is an offering token into a titan's tooth which will kill two of you um but above all else we're like extremely glad we didn't draw our frostbite tank which we needed to draw this turn and is an essential play um rage is super important You always love this. this. This saves you a little. Um, you are going to get armor 10. I don't think there's a way that we can kill you easily. So I think we kind of just let you go, to be honest. And uh, I think... It's a bit of a weird one. It's a bit weird. I think you go for this, and then the offering totem, and we're not gonna get anything off of that. But at least we we sap, so our tank will live longer. And we are putting the rage on the sap or on the on the sweep unit for now, so that they're gonna do better in the future with it. I think, which is why we're actually just gonna keep it moving. Um, and we, we'd like to put it on you. Don't get me wrong, but like, get that moving. We got no space down here. You are getting stronger. I can't deny that you're getting stronger over time. But there you go. You're dead. Dude, I, does this boss sweep? <laughs> if this boss does not sweep... Um, oh, we should definitely just cream you there. If this boss does not sweep, we have like an amazing thing going. Because you only have 9 HP anyway. And you lost it at the start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, dude, now you got a 79 by 2 sweeper here. I, this is a, an unbelievably good start. You are fragile, so you gotta be very careful about that. I still... The, the more rage, the merrier for now, especially because we're putting it on a, a floor where it, it's doing great stuff for us. Um, we don't really want to ascend the unit. Unless we could ascend a unit that will still die, but would have attacked. So I, I actually think, now that I think about it, that's a pretty good ascend, because you being dazed is going to save our tank a little bit of damage. And we might as well put this down here for more rage on you to begin with. And now you can see it. You can see it. It's starting. It's starting to tick. No doubt about that. And we, you know what? Put the rail beater up here. He's not really doing anything, but you know, get him out of the deck. All right. So we have a brief respite. A, a respite that is well warranted. And uh, I think we will make you a one fifteen by two. And we might as well try to draw more rage. It's not going to happen, but it is going to happen, dude. <laughs> Alright, now you're a 155 by 2. Bro. <laughs> they got sweep! Okay. that's It's not the end of the world. We could play 5 spells. On this floor. And then we would at least land 300 damage. So there's that. Excuse me. You do have 10 turns of lifesteal, huh? I still think you're gonna hear me out here. I, I could alternatively start applying rage to the front line unit. Or to it to our top line unit here. I don't know that it's the right play. Like, I think we'd still rather do this. And we'll discard dead weight, which we should have done earlier. You're at one. I'm like, do I give you extra I think I just give you this extra twenty rage. And you now you're taking five hundred and eighty two damage. And you're going to have a bunch of frostbite. That's pretty sick. Considering that they only lived through like two attacks, that was awesome. And I feel like really proud of myself, honestly. Anyway, you're toasted. We got to be careful because if we, if we continue to do one horn rage on the sweep unit, we got real problems there. We don't have like any armor. Because if they get hit once, our whole plan goes to crap. However, <laughs> prior to that, it's really good. Perhaps good enough, as you saw right there. Alright, so we got our next boss coming. I, dude, honestly, I'm going heavy on the removal strats here, for sure. Um, I will say, dude, quick on our sweeping unit. Now I'm like, we, we survive so much more. And then another 25 on you is just disgusting. Now, does anybody need, like, a little bonus? Like, I don't know, maybe? I kind of like you having zero attack more than five, because it means you don't attack into spikes, though. Conserve energy between turns. I mean, this has not been useful at all. 
So I would say maybe we start there. The other way we could have done it is taken the other one and then set up our floors instead of being 1-2, set them up 2-3, and we'd have a pretty big advantage there. But I think we can find a way to make this work too. Okay, so the next removal spell... I would probably say we don't need so many Queen's Implings. And this deck's getting good, dude. Like, it's getting good. It's getting consistent. Now, you are... You're the one we have to play around. You apply Days on Rally. And you add, a, you add crap to our deck. All right. All right. I mean, our Pyre's got health, so I'm not sweating that. Um, we we got to play around the Days for sure. So we do have our Frostbite unit. That's, like, has to be done. Um... We got Lodestone is huge. We actually like that both of you were attacking. But we can also kill you with a zero cost vent. So if I rally, you're going to apply days to me. I think that's totally fine because these units are not going to live. So I think we just go straight into this, honestly. And now you're going to... Okay, but we can't kill you, so we're not sweating that. All right, we got our Sweeper. And remember, our Sweeper is now quick. So this gets, like, disgusting. Get some Rage. Get some Rage. Oh, that only triggers on Harvest? But you die, right? I don't know. Maybe, maybe nothing happens here. Um... There's no real need to summon any imps except to get them out of our deck, but I don't really feel like that's a great reason. I would summon the rail beater just to get him out there. Okay, so if we summon anything on the top floor, we're going to be dazed. Lucky for us, that's like 0% chance that's going to happen. So we are going to hit you with the one horn. And then the next step of one horn... Oh, man, that's free. That's amazing. Is uh, stacking the rage as high as possible. And this is looking mighty good. <laughs> Let me tell you. Especially with quick. This is looking mighty good. So we'll play this for free. When one of our units dies. We get trash in our deck. Something tells me. That's not likely to be a problem. Um, well you're all dead anyway. So we really might as well. Hit you with the ritual of battle. When one of your units... Ah, uh, you know what? I think this actually is going to add three Weight of Contritions into our deck. Unfortunately. Maybe not. I don't know. What do I know, dude? Maybe we'll summon one of you up here? I guess, you know, it's nice to have the rage. Nope, that is not how it works. It really is when one of my units dies. Well, that's terrible news for you, because, like, I don't know if my units are dying. They seem to be doing a pretty good job of not doing that right now. We're okay. We're okay. Honestly, give me give me some rage. And then give me a... A transcend imp, I guess, for even more rage. We do get dazed, but, you know, the rage will stick around for a bit. <laughs> you know what I should have done is done this send you up there's no real reason to send anybody up here it just makes things worse so I would I would pause on this one I mean we're doing stupid damage this is this is truly something this is an incredible game right now so you'll keep getting stronger and you'll keep getting stronger now you're doing 400 damage with quick that also applies frostbite not that the frostbite is really that <laughs> that important but you know Plus, every time we cast a spell, by the way, there's a little bit of sap involved, which is doing some great stuff. We only die now to, like, quick sweep, which is not altogether that likely. And actually, I think, like, the boss might die. Well, they, they almost died before we even got to fight here. I mean, you're just dead, right? That's a really good start. I, I never thought we'd get there. Now, mind you, we're not really using our champion to the best of their abilities. We definitely do want another. <laughs> and I feel like energy has been incredible for us. We're never running out of draw. We're always running out of energy. We're never running out of capacity either. So I feel like we just have like a truly amazing run here. Um, that really does not use many of the new mechanics at all, but that's okay. And... 
I'm, I'm pretty proud of the way I'm running this deck, too. Like, it is a 19-card deck. That's a level of resolve that I don't always get to. Friendly units enter with Rage 3 is like... I don't think it's incredible, but it's pretty okay. You give me two imps in my hand now? Welder Helper and Fledgling Imp? That's pretty sick. Maybe, maybe Covenant, uh... I honestly think we can turn it on. But I'm not gonna. I don't want to risk it. I, I think maybe Covenant 10 might be a little bit on the easy side as my, as my sea legs are coming back to me. Okay, so we, there's kind of like a order of operations. This has to come out. Then Colcelia has to come out. The Lodestone Totem has to come out. The next steps are a little fuzzy, I'll admit. Ritual of Battle is super important. Um, but I don't think it's as... Well, you come up here, by the way. I don't think it's as important as getting that early one horn. And then you would probably just do the... Okay, we got the other one horn right after, which is disappointing, but not that big of a deal. Alright. Now, we can get you for zero if we want to get you for zero. Um, we do have more rage. This has to come out. It's causing you guys a lot of problems, which is wonderful news. So, why don't you give uh, me armor? I don't know. I don't think it matters. I think, why don't you take some armor? Why don't you take some armor? Why don't we uh, transcend imp even more armor out here? You're dead. That's wonderful news for me, uh, to be clear. I don't think we ascend the unit. So I think this is sadly like offering token. And actually those went really well. The sap is not that meaningful, but I think we'll get rail beater out there just to get him out there. And then again, the ascend is not good. I don't think you ascend anything. We could ascend the zero um yeah, actually, maybe, I'm like, to get a sap, maybe this is worth something, but I don't know, man. It's kind of kind of a weird energy. And then we'll play this up here. Like, he's not doing anything to the pyre, but like, you know, we didn't have to do him like that. Lots of good stuff here. So this is a gimme. We don't really care if you make it to the pyre, because you're dazed as crap anyway. Um... Don't need to summon any imps, but we are... The deck's getting a little clogged with the imps. There's no doubt about that. I think we would do this, for sure. Now you guys are all dead, which is great news. So I think we'd probably follow it up with just one of... Oh my god, this is so good. Throw one of those in there. And then throw another one of these in there. And it is holdover, which is awesome as well. Um, it's not like they would get to act anyway. I mean, like, our sweeper is kind of like an icy vent to begin with. It's like an air conditioning vent. So we love that. You're all dead, which is great news. Again, we'll give you one of those. And I'll tell you what, we'll give you one of those as well. Um, stop me if you've heard this one before. There you go. So now, like, it's it's kind of just comical. We have about, you know, close to 600 damage that comes out before the other enemies even get to attack. Which is, like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> How are you supposed to, to solve that problem? If you get 600 damage immediately and there's an 80 HP tank in front? We've never really built a run like this, which is kind of surprising to me. Alright, so you... I mean, it was obvious that you were dead. To me, at least. Um, the question is, how long are you going to live? The answer was two turns. <laughs> okay, so, I mean... This is a, a very, very fast run as well. We don't, we don't want Inferno on this one. It's too spicy. We don't want anything that's cheap. So, this is a weird run in the sense that Volatile Gauge didn't really win the run for us, even though what normally wins the run for us is Volatile Gauge. When you when you have it, I should say. So, as much as I'm going to, like, fetishize removing those last few cards, I think the simple best play for you is to go for the Super Ritual of Battle Duplicate. Honestly, I mean, that's like a nice fail-safe. We're not really short on rage. <laughs> I think that that's a nice uh, opportunity to keep us moving along here. I, I'll level with you as well. Like, Railbeater has no reason to exist in this deck. The only reason I took it um, 
it was because of the fact that I was like, well, well, if something gets by, maybe we'll want it in the future, but like, it's not really that relevant. Turns out sweep, multi-strike quick, and infinite rage is, is pretty great. Now, the thing is, there are sweeping enemies here. They aren't going to be quick enemies, but they're sweeping enemies. So do, do your audit, okay? We definitely, we know we need you. We know we need you as well, even though it's insanely expensive. You're both going to die, which is awesome news. And then in terms of, it's a weird one. D don't get me wrong. But I'm like, I think you should be enraged, my friend. Which will minimize the amount of damage you take. Yeah, now you're only taking seven. Why enrage him? He's likely to live longer, is really what it comes down to. Now there's some non-negotiables. You absolutely have to come out. You're also going to be the target of rage. It would be nice to kill you. I'm not going to deny that one. We could always Titans Tooth you. Yeah. But first, you know what? I don't know if we are going to be able to Titans Tooth you, but I'll tell you. First, we need to have this one horn out there. The question is do you want two one horns? Oh, we can't get two one horns. Okay, so then we're just going to make sure that you guys all die. Oh, 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 oh. We're going to make sure that you guys all die up here. That's, that's much better for us. We, one horn is going to come back around. It's a very, very thin deck. It doesn't take long. In fact, it came back around. So no other enemies should ever hit us with sweeping quick active. So again, now I think you just... You, you win easily by just doing that. Um, we can vent on this floor. I think it makes most sense to vent on that floor. In which case, we might as well play this for some sap. And the sap is still essential because it keeps our frostbite tank alive longer. And every turn that our frostbite tank lives is like... I mean, I don't need to run the numbers for you, I'm sure. <laughs> it's really useful. Let's put it that way. Like, right now, you're taking no damage. Actually, I guess, you know what? It doesn't really make them live any longer at all. Because Quick just kills them before they even get a chance to attack. So, you know. Ignore what I said. That being said, it's a pretty good run. Um, maybe, like, the single strongest run I've ever had. I know I say that a lot, but... You know, at, we, we got a unit with 129 rage. I don't, I mean, I guess you're, you're not doing any damage, so I don't see any reason to attack you. <laughs> I, I think if, if we get a little lucky, our boss um, will die before they get to attack. But I'm sure, yeah, we're, we're one wave away, so they actually won't, which is very unfortunate, but... It is what it is, you know? It is what it is. Let's get some more armor out here. They will die on, like, the first attack on this wave. So, yeah. Um, pretty pretty good. 187 rage. My, my personal suggestion, uh, if, you've, if you've ever um, found yourself in a position on these runs where you're like, I don't know what to do. I would suggest, personally, that getting 187 rage should be one of your top priorities. It's really, uh, that's solid. So, I'm really glad I took Cold Celia, a unit that I was kind of on the fence about taking, but it worked out pretty nicely, and uh, we'll, we'll count that as one of our most fun victories ever. Get, got some Goldos. Win streaks increased. Ooh, good. starting to get the card collection worked out there. Anyway, I hope you guys have been enjoying the Return to Monster Train. We'll be back to keep working through the cycle a little bit. If you enjoyed it, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And thanks for your support. Clicking the like button in particular. See ya. I got a tab and then I'll see ya.